Hey folks, it's Brian, and this is another video in my Jeep TJ build series. This one is number 87. Uh, this one's just going to be odds and ends. I've got a bunch of little stuff that I'm going to do, so uh, let's get right to it. Hey, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. Um, and if you really like it and enjoy my channel, please hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you find out when I release new videos. Um, you can find the other videos in this build series under my uh, playlist Jeep Build. And um, just for background, in case this is the first video you've seen, this started out as a salvage buy. I bought this from Copart. It was totaled out by a major insurance company as economically unrepairable. And I guess if you're paying shop labor rates, maybe it would have been un uneconomical. So I'm having fun with it. I'm building it. And today we're going to deal with some rust at the back. So I got some rust on this shield that protects the gas tank. And I got a little bit of surface crap up here. I'm going to deal with both of those. Let me show you what we're going to do. First, we're going to mask off. Uh, the part that's red that we want to stay red and I apologize if the camera angles are funky I screwed up my flexible camera mount. I got another one coming. It'll be here tomorrow uh, I'm using some scotch uh, Easy mask that's what I call it. I don't know what they call it. Anyway, you pull it out. It has the tape built in uh, And already attached to the plastic and this is great because it speeds up the masking process and Murphy's Law is you will run out partway through the project. So you always want to go back and you want to hand adhere the plastic. Let me get some uh, masking tape here. Once you've hand adhered it, you want to take another uh, low residue tape and you want to just attach it. It doesn't really matter in this case, it's not going to be up for very long. So I'm just using whatever I have handy. If I was repainting the whole thing, it would probably be different, but that's not today's project. And then you want to go back and retape the seam with a quality tape. Uh, the tape that's built into the plastic is just there to hold the plastic. Sometimes it makes more sense to start with uh, the tape and come back uh, with the plastic second, but in this case that's not what I did. I've got a whole new roll of this. Let me get it open without cutting my finger off. So what's good about this stuff is you can literally pull out what you need and then cut it off and you just it's got a blade built into it it'll cut your finger faster than you cut anything else and this plastic specializes in sticking to everything except what you're trying to paint Today is the exception. We want just another little tiny piece of this. Usually the static is pretty good about clinging it together for a minute uh, while you tape it. Any of the blue tapes are fine for this particular type of project. 
All right, so that's all together. I'll be right back. Let me put this stuff away. So I'm going to use rust reformer on the tank skid. Uh, this will convert some of the rust into iron phosphate, uh, which is an inert substance. Jeep's going to wind up painted in this stuff. And then the rest of it just gets flat black. That's the official trim color of this Jeep. Everybody else gets high from the fumes. Yeah, I'm gonna open the door for a minute to get rid of the fumes. But on a serious note, it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, a little bit up here. There you go. That's uh, that project back here. So let me uh, pull down this this masking.
All right, we'll move to the front. Damn it. I know this is, that's irritating with the camera. Um, I know there's people that are like, oh man, I would never use Rust-Oleum. I only use Kryolan. I only use Pour 15. I only use Fairy Dust. I don't give a fuck, okay? It's an 18 year old Jeep. 19 years old, maybe. Uh, depending if we get nitty gritty with when it was built. I'm just trying to keep it looking okay. And I want to use a paint that's easy to get, that's easy to live with, that's easy to touch up. Flat black for all the non-essential areas meets those criteria. So let's go to the front. I've got some more projects up there. Now, maybe I don't need quite this much space, but this does give me plenty of room to work. So I've got some Chinese towing hooks. Um, they're stamped max load 10,000 pounds, but those are Chinese pounds and not American pounds. Um, now, I have no idea what these are. I have no idea where they came from. They look like cheap Chinese shit on Amazon. And uh, if there's one thing that's predictable about Chinese business is that they'll cut a corner to steal a dime. Um, their ethics are just really different over there, and it's kind of a shame. I know some Chinese people. They're really nice people. But uh, when it comes to international Chinese corporations, I don't trust them any further than I could piss them away. Um, so I am uh, going to pull these off. Uh, one of them is damaged. This one's bent a little bit. This is the part where whatever it was that damaged this, this Jeep took place. Um, so I'm going to pull these off. And uh, oh, yeah. And then I've got some bolts to replace the missing bolts. So. Uh, I ordered these from Bolt Depot. Uh, let's see, where are my little ones? So I've got some 2 inch, uh, some pop washers, 1 and 3 quarter, 2 and a quarter. So probably going to be 1 and 3 quarter. I ordered two of these. These are for the bottom. This is half by 13. Um, I realize that these are not Torx bits. I don't give a fuck. Um, it's my Jeep, not Chrysler's. Um, so anyway, let me put uh, these together. Pretty sure this is all it's going to take. Uh, and I'm going to put thread lock on. But first, let me make sure that they're going to thread in properly. Um, in the shop are really bright. I can't see a fucking thing down here. And that one's bent way up. Ain't no fucking way. It's so interesting they reinforced it right there. I might be able to bring it down, but I ain't holding my breath. And... Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, I think that one will be fine. So let me get the other ones off. lazy so I'm gonna use the power tool so this hole is deformed and it's causing it to be difficult and you can actually see a little 
Um, there's some cracking of the powder coat on there, so those are going back to China for the recycling system. Uh, take the of them. All right, so let's start with what's going on over here. Let's see if I can bend that back out. I found that a large crescent wrench is usually the best way to do this. Although this might really be pushing it. Side's on. Oh, and I was going to put thread lock on these. Damn it, where'd that go? <clears throat> We did not cross thread anything. So, what I'm installing are some Kurt tow hooks. And uh, Kurt's a reputable ma manufacturer. These are probably made in Mexico. Um, whatever. Let's see where these are made. Made in China. Well, Kurt's still a reputable company. I trust their Chinese shit more than generic uh, sellers on Amazon. I will not be installing this. I don't know, maybe I should. Ah, eh, fuck it, I'll install it. I, I just don't think that's particularly important. Um,
Yeah, their their uh, bolts are not long enough. And that was one of the things I anticipated, so I ordered some extra bolts. So they sent two inch bolts. We'll see if I can get two and a quarters to work. Yeah, that two and a quarter is going to work. Uh, where did I set the? Yeah, there it is. So before we get too far in, I'm going to get this one started. Well, actually, no, I'm just going to get this one started. I need the two and a quarter just to pull it in and then I can go with their bolt so I'm going to switch it out because theirs are um, treated with black stuff and uh, I forget what it's called it's a chemical process so it won't rust that loose these are um, I don't know it's half 13 I'll, I'll think about it all right this is gonna be a little tough because these don't line up um, I only got one bolt here so I don't know what I'm gonna do with the other one yeah I do I can get to the other one from the bottom so I'm gonna start with all this in here but I got a lock up on top and a lock nut and a washer on the bottom yeah that ain't gonna happen there's not even enough I would need like a three inch bolt to get in there so all right that's fine I 
disappointed that fell apart, but, you know, Chinese -ism. Well, the other one's going to come apart, too. Hmm. Let me get the bottom one. So I'm going to do the bottom one first. Uh, this is going to be messy. Alright, that's as good as that needs to be. And that's as good as that needs to be. It does need a little tiny alignment. But I need a two and a half inch. And quite frankly, I don't trust what Home Depot sells. And I don't like these, so I'm going to get rid of it. In fact, I'm going to take it off the other side. is coming right off not even a very good job that, that's really a shame uh, but you know make a buck steal a dime that's how corporate America commits its crime all right so these are on um, that's really it I need like uh, so two and a quarter just barely gets down there. I need a two and three quarter. So I'll source one of those bolts. And the beauty of using a base color like this is you can very quickly make everything match. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let me see if I got anything else that's uh, on the odds and ends list. 